Hi everybody, welcome to Whiskey Mystery. I'm Phil. I'm Deep. And of course, happy Thanksgiving. <laughs> and what could be better on Thanksgiving than saying thank you for boxes <gasps> arriving? Uh, it's in time. And uh, this one actually it's arrived. Good. This one arrived today. I didn't know there was deliveries today. <clears throat> so thank you very much for that. Cheers. I'm just having water. I can have whiskey. You can have whiskey. I'm still on uh, whiskey free mode. 10 days from Sacramento Marathon. Mm. Things are going well though. Fitness is mm. back. Uh, Mac. Yeah, and I, I did a nice run this morning. I ran a half marathon at one hour, 35 minutes. So very happy. Okay, how's everyone doing? Who is in? Before we get, get to... Uh, <laughs> I see people are saying they'd be very surprised if there isn't something from Campbelltown in these boxes. <laughs> Uh, Donna Pass, yes, happy Thanksgiving to all you, all us Americans. Whiskey Lover Society's in, Nick Keane, Aaron Hardiman, Melissa. Hey, Melissa, are you having a bourbon today? Uh, and you're guessing Springbank, Aquami. What a surprise. Yes, a little surprise one. We are early because we're running out to see uh, friends for Thanksgiving. So uh, let's see, Melissa. If we guess right, the bottles will be opened. That's right, fine. Deep will open whatever she wants anyway. Compass box, no name. A Kwame. No. We don't have that one. Jerry Miller. Good to see you in. Let's see. I have time to see this. Go have dinner and maybe get some of Roy's quiz. Perfect. Yeah. Busy. We'll probably miss uh, Roy today. JD, bourbon approach. I'm guessing Glen Scotia. Mm, maybe. Honestly, I can't quite remember. I've got my labels ready. I've got my labels ready for what they might be, but I don't want to look. So uh, I'd be shocked if there's no Campbelltown, Aaron is <laughs> saying, uh, yes. Okay, who else? Malt Million, James Everett, Isaias, Valenzuela, Teddy KGB, and Stefan. Hi, Stefan, how are you doing? Right, let's, um, let's open something. <clears throat> Because if we don't open something, Deepa won't have anything to drink. Oh, not that. Just take the chat off. Okay. Well, this one. Alan, this is this is uh, your box. Everything looks like it has arrived safely. Now, we did a little swap little box swap with Alan. Alan wanted some things from K&L and he had access to some things over in Binnie's. Looking I good. Know, I Looking good. Let's take the box out of the way. Has everything survived? Yes. Oh. Ah. What do we have here? If anyone knows our top 10, you will know that Dal Yuan, 22 year old, not one, but two. Um, it is this bottle here, which is currently our number 10. Got some. We have about, there's about that much left in it. And I bought it from um, Ace Spirits originally, but Ace Spirits don't ship anymore uh, out to California at least. Wine boat, wine boat, yeah, 51.9. It is exactly the same bottle, but I did find it. It was in Binnie's uh, in Chicago and uh, I had no way to get it and they don't ship. So thank you very much, Alan and Alan's friend who made this possible. Uh, let's see. Well, you can look at that one. Well, Binnie's, so Signatory Vintage. And let me put it somewhere that you can read. There we go. 22 years from Dal Ewan from 1997, matured in a hogshead. So ex-bourbon, presumably. No sign of this being sherry. Yes, 264 bottles, almost certainly a uh, ex-bourbon but we know it's a hogshead and we absolutely loved it. 
You want, you want it's up there? Mm -hmm. Okay, off you go. So, what did we end up paying? I've got my label ready. Um, with the shipping, $190 for a cask strength, 22 year old Galluin. $55. Yeah, the first one cost $155. But if anyone is near Binnie's and can get this, I absolutely recommend it. Let's see if you... There's, there's a lot of bottles that you're going to want to try. <laughs> right. Preston W. Yes, independent bottles. You're right on that guess. Pulsegraph's in. Wasn't aware you'd come on so early. Yeah, we just thought we'd drop one in before we run off for Thanksgiving. Maybe Springbank 21? Mm, let's see. The Electron Cloud, that's a new name, surely. Has anyone had Octomore 12.3? Not had the 12.3. We've had um, a couple of others. I doubt it's worth the money, Electron Cloud, especially with it being so young, but maybe. Does that mean they'll join the other bottles in the blind tasting? These ones, no. In fact, probably nothing will go in the blind tasting. Yes, backups. Some waxy Daluan, nice. Ooh, signatory, Justin, yes. Jerry Miller. Hope you two know how good you have it in California. We were just in Reading and spent 292 on scotch. That would have cost over 540 here in Seattle. Well, I'm glad you got some good bargains. Richard Cannon, hello my friend as well. Thank you very much, Jerry. We will get your name into the hat for a drawing. Maybe we'll do a drawing. That'll be fun. Justin Miller, I had the 2.2. It was good, I haven't had the 12.3. Yeah, and the 2.2, they can be quite different, can't they? The 0.2s, they can do different things. Oh, Stefan, at last I got you live. <laughs> Maybe because we were a little early. Right, I should, um, I should press on with the box from Scotch Whiskey Auctions. And I know, <laughs> Stefan, fantastic. Oh, no, what have I just pushed? Yes, there's your coins. Now, I know what you're thinking. Didn't we just open the box from Scotch Whiskey Auctions? And the answer to that would be yes. And I had left bottles behind Knowing that we were going to Scotland, we'll be there from December 8th, all, all things going well with the traveling. Um, and I, we've got quite a lot of bottles sitting at my parents' house because we haven't visited for two years. And I thought, I'm looking forward to getting Farkless from 05, 25 years. Are you? Glen Farkless 105. Oh yeah, the old one. And I just thought there's too many bottles to bring back. So anything that we had at the auction, we're just going to ship. And more or less, that's what we did. And we've shared shipping with Sean. Uh, Zachary, big fan. Thankful for your videos. Oh, thanks, Zachary. Here's some coins for you. I see it in this chat. I don't know if it popped up in the, in the live yet because there's a little delay. <laughs> No problem, Justin Miller, no problem. Just got both of them recently. Oh, what was that? Missed that one. The Octomores, maybe. Thank you very much, Zach. There it is. <laughs> Electron Cloud, I've been searching for the 0.3 Octomores for forever. Finally found an overpriced 12.3. Had to pull the trigger. Yes. Well, um, the Electron Cloud, do we have Octomore on the sharing list? I have a 6.3. If you're really, really, really wanting to try it, I think there's still some left. <laughs> Send me an email, whiskey at captain3d.com. You can find it in the sharing list link, which is in the description of this video, I think. Right. Uh, there are no Octomores in this box. Did you put any water in? No. It is 51, so you might want to. Okay, there's all the paper. Here we go. We are going in. They do such a great job of packing Scotch whiskey auctions. Never had a problem. Now. Oh, is that a shotgun? 
some of these are Sean's. And so, okay, here's a good one. It's a young one. That's so nice. Electron Cloud, likewise, love the videos. <laughs> keep, keep it up, team. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Electron Cloud. And there you go. You can have nice some coins. Right, this one, if you remember, it was in our blind tasting. We had it as a sample from, I don't remember who the sample was from, but um, Martin maybe? And it showed up on the auction. Now this wasn't an expensive bottle originally. Um, it's just such a fantastic Laphroaig. With shipping, Unfortunately, it ended up at $144 to get it here, but it should have been more like an $80 bottle originally. So Hogshead Laphroaig, punchy, what is the percentage? 63.4, but absolutely fantastic. Just to talk a little bit about Scotch whiskey auctions, I've talked about it before. If you bid $100, sorry, £100 for a bottle, it's going to more or less cost you $200 to get it to the door at the moment. Shipping's about $35 per bottle if you fill a box with 10 because um, there's a COVID charge and there's fees and all that kind of stuff. So bear that in mind. And there's an upper limit. If you go above a value of two and a half thousand for the box, you go into a customs bracket that requires a higher fee. So the perfect bottle is to buy <laughs> 10 bottles bidding 170 pounds. <laughs> That's the best you can do. Right. Here's another. I will save the trauma. Oh, sponge cake. Almond. I think I'll probably wrestle this out later. Unless it comes out easily. Oh, it's coming out easily. Okay. Oh, this one. What do we have? It's another top 10. Where's it got? Yes. Yeah. This. Le Jade. It's so, so good. Actually, this was, there's a funny story with Sean with this one that we had, I had shared 200 mil with Sean. We had traded for something. Actually, I had some of his Japanese whiskey, expensive, like Takatsuru 21 year old. And then at some point, Sean said, I know you really like that Le Jade do you want it back? And I said, yeah, I'll have it back. And I'll, I'll give you your Japanese back because they've become so expensive. So we ended up oh, that's trading back, back again. That's very nice. But let's see, let, let, let me let you see what this is. Now this bottle is actually quite an old one, probably four or five years old since it came out, but it's um, a Montiado cask finish on a 13 year old Le Jig, 59.2% and it is just the best peated whiskey we've had. Oh, what's the date? Do we have a date that we can see there? It's a code, but uh, no obvious date. So. Did we got a bit of a... There is some downstairs. Yeah. Let me put this one back up. Now, the first time we bought it, my parents brought it over and it was about, I don't know what we paid the first time, but this time with shipping, $230. And I would never have paid that if we hadn't absolutely loved it in the first place. I mean, that is a today's price, it's 233. It's about double, I think, what we paid. Actually, I could have a look, it's IJK. L, got my spreadsheet open, L, E, L, J, 13. We paid $108 the first time, 108. So I guess the average between the two isn't too bad. But um, honestly, it's our favorite peated whiskey. You know, better than all of the Ardbegs, Laphroaigs that we've had, this Le Jaeg. Uh Sherry. I better, I better go down a bit. Sherry and Smokey. Okay, let's, uh, let's go back to the chat. Let's see who's in. 
Highland Hamish, greetings from Inverness. Hey Hamish, nice to see you in. Nikki, my plan is to get oh the point three releases each year until I retire. <laughs> oh nice. So you like the optimal. Oh, there's smoke. It's there's no smoke here. No. Um let's see. Oh wow, this Lejeg was good. Yeah. Love that colour. Melissa, have you ever visited Isle of Mull? No. I see that is where Le Jague is from. It is Tobermory. Um, Le Jague. Maybe we could try and get to the Isle of Mull this visit. Who knows? Right. Oh, there's a single cast of nation. Let's see. What? What is now? This one is not ours. This one's Sean's. Sean, I shall bring it over soon. Sean is a fan of Imperial. If you saw the last unboxing, Sean had a couple of Imperials there as well. I will set this down on this side. What else did Sean get, if I can remember? Okay, what's this? Oh, yes, I will leave this in the box, but this is, uh, no, this is Sean's as well. Can anyone work out what that is? In there <laughs> whiskey lovers society wow not cheap i know we really overpaid uh for the legit but we just wanted one okay hang on can you see what's in here this is an old stubby bottle of bowmore i will treat it carefully because that is not ours Another one of Sean's. What's the other one of Sean's? I'm trying to see. Okay, a simpler one. This was actually more of a box filler. I was planning to just open this when we went to Scotland, but how bad Is that for us? could it be? Yeah, this one's ours. That's about as generic as you get, isn't it? Let's see, how much did this one cost? It's an Isla, it's 25 years old, it's 46% from the Wine Society. Uh, with shipping coming in at around 200. Now, do we know anything about it? Bottle for the Wine Society Stevenage in Hearts. Um, it's, let's see. Is there anything which suggests Isla malts are some of the strongest flavored of all malts? Pungent, weighty, heavily peated, this bottling shows typical rich flavour and the characteristic iodine and medicinal flavours on the finish. Well, that sort of suggests Laphroaig, but it's almost certainly a Colila, isn't it? Does anyone have any clue? Um, I know that was sort of a last minute bid on that one. <laughs> right, I'll put it with the... Well, it was cheap at the time, but then by the time shipping went on, it got a bit expensive. Right, that one's done. Oh, we're going to have to do a little bit of... Oh, can you see the scissors down there? Yeah. Let me have the scissors so I don't slash any boxes, just in case they are Sean's. Gonna go for the slash instead. Right. Um, In my mind, it's better more. So you can you can start opening one. It'll save a little bit of time. While I get this one unwrapped. Oh, I'm seeing, I'm seeing a Caden Heads. So in that sense, anything from Caden Heads is Campbelltown, right? Because if it's matured at Caden Heads, it's matured at Spring, Springbank. But is it actually anything from Campbelltown? Put that down. This is a Caden Head. Oh, can't really see it, can you? It's an old one, but just 42%. 
and it is from Glen Turret. And I was I bought this on the basis that it's just old and ex bourbon. Let's see. 1987 17 bourbon hogshead just 150 bottles so definitely it's coming in at a, a light ABV tasting notes melted white chocolate with raspberry coolie brandy snap biscuits and caramel palette toffee soft woodiness and green apple skins blah 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 we'll decide <laughs> right, let's go to the chat and see what people are thinking so far. Bowmore, yes, Bowmore 12. Looks like Phil and Deepa have had a spend up. Yeah, like normal. That is some amazing bottles. Old born Bowmore, yeah, that one's Sean's. I'll have to ask him for a little sip. Almost 30 years, nice. What beauties. So far, look, I just realized apart from the Lejeague, Everything's an independent bottle, isn't it? These are all independent bottles oh. so far. That's official. Right. <laughs> Another Caden head. Mm. Okay. It's a zebra. Offset of getting extra. What do you mean? Is it cheaper outside? No, they would be cheaper if you bought them at the Caden head shop. Okay, this is something I'm looking forward to. A 30 year Highland Park. Oh, hang on. We didn't, uh, we didn't, we didn't do the pricing. Uh, 87, what was the Glen Turret? The Glen Turret worked out at $218. So it was actually cheaper than the Lejeeg for a 29 year old Glen Turret. Okay, I can tell you this Highland Park is not going to be cheaper. This was an expensive bottle. So, another hogshead. Oh, Richard. Phil and Deepa provide an interesting and concise perspective on the whiskey they present. Well, thanks, Richard. <laughs> we try. Oh, a double, hang on. Zachary, Zachary just bought us a whole load of drinks. <laughs> Your name will get into the box there as well, Zachary. Let's see. Let's give you some coins as well. Where's my button? Just waiting for it to refresh. Ah, uh, thank you very much, fellas. Okay, back to the Highland Park. 47.4%. And again, Cadenhead's authentic collection. Any tasting notes? What do we see? Can we get a focus? Oh. Reverse tropical fruit, soft olive, fainty medicinal. Look at that. Mmm, that's gonna be good, I hope. Because where is the price on it? Okay, guesses. How much did a 30 year Highland Park cost by the time it got here? I'll give you a minute to make a guess. We have a few left. Uh, let's see. Justin Miller. Hey, Justin, how you doing? Uh, oh no, hang on, Tom Tubbs, even to both of you. Really enjoying going through your videos chronologically. Oh, wow. Is, uh, is the reviewed and rated shelf now two shelves? Yes, if you're in early videos, we used to have what was still coming and then what was rated. Now we've gone through so many that things that we have rated are all pushed off the shelf as well. So this represents the top 50 out of 220 that we've reviewed. And there's still a hundred down here. <laughs> Justin Miller, 30 year. Oh, I'd love to try that, Highland Park. Well, it might make it on the sharing list. Uh, Mr. Tiger Mode, amazing finds. You two are so much fun. Oh, thanks. <laughs> 30 year old Highland Park, so jealous. 400, no. 380, Melissa, no. Aquami, 470. James, 650. That makes me feel better. <laughs> Mary, thanks, Griving. Uh, giving. Ah, uh, Dustin, how are you doing? A thousand. Oh, that makes me feel much better. No, it actually ended up costing 513. Because uh, of attack. It was expensive. I think it was 320 pounds 
was the bid. Right, uh, Stefan. Imperial is such a fantastic whiskey, but the prices rose since two years at the auctions. Yes. Happy to have some great Imperials for the future. I do have one. Nick, 555, you're pretty damn close there. Right, okay, Stefan, everyone's still guessing. Uh, the Lefroy 25 you shared with me was so good. Oh, Justin, great, you enjoyed that sample. Paid 500 US for my first Highland Park 30. That's right. You did get a good price. Highland Park. LP, where are you looking? Oh, Lefroy. Uh, 513, not too bad, Justin. Yeah, not too bad. Okay, that's very good for a 30 year. Let's hope so. Right, let's keep the independent Cadenhead authentic collection going <laughs> with, wow, that's a little paler. It's still an oldie. And this one is, let's see. This time we have another Le Jig. Distilled in 1993, Bourbon Hogshead. Deep, oh, I know where Deep has gone. Deep has gone to get that Le Jig so she can try it. So a Bourbon Le Jig, 22 years old at 54.3. Now, <laughs> considering we paid way over the price for this, we paid 233 for this Le Jig. We actually only paid, only, we paid 203 for the 22 year old Le Jig. <laughs> there we go. We have, I think we've got maybe one more. Two more? Okay, we've got two more. Two more to go. Um, let's see. False graph. Yeah, I thought it costs around 300 plus at the moment. So not quite as much again for the shipping. Yeah, when you get to the higher price bottles, then the fees and the shipping, well, the fees don't get a smaller percentage. The shipping becomes a smaller percentage. Those labels are so awesome. Well, <laughs> see my labels, I'll show you one. Here's the one for the Lejeg. I write down a few facts for myself. Uh, percentage, obviously the name of the bottle, where we got it from, Scotch Whiskey Auctions. 203 is the price we paid. 160 is the price at 40% ABV, because I like to compare. 112% uh, is just a little pricing thing for us. Like, is it above or below average for the years? And then at the bottom, $7.3 per year when it's normalized down to 40%. So just to go through them, $13 per year, $7.3 per year, 15.5 for the Highland Park, 7.7 .7 for the Glen Turret, 7.5 for the Isla. See, the Lefroy get only eight is $12.2 uh, per year. And the Dal Ewans are 6.7, so bargains. And Octomore, seen as you were discussing it earlier, are like 35 to $40 per year. And something like Springbank Local Barley is around the 13 mark. Right, we have another, whoops. We have one more Caden head, and then we'll finish on an official bottle. Are you going to try that, Lejay? Mm, but they were not. It's okay. <laughs> Grab a glass. Is there anything from Campbelltown so far? Not a single one, is there? Okay, let's see what Deepas thinks of the Lejay. Now, typically what happens in these situations, Deepa has a taste and then says, oh, it's not as good as I thought. You know how strong this is? 59. Okay. It's very ashy, but it's not ashy. Oh, it's wine gums. This is the wine gums mm -hmm. and smoke, though. That's why I like it so much. Oh. Mm. I'm going to have a little taste myself. You're going to try it? For the marathon. Mmm. Wow, even with the water that strong. Ah, oh, barbecue charred wine gums. It's a little bit like the Kilhoman Sauterne. 
in that sweet and smoke. The thicker ash, but get more ashy. More ashy. But come back with the back gum, with the bubble gum. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's get through it. Actually, what's that, what are people saying? Anthony Wright. A beautiful shopping day. Yes, Justin Miller. Have to pay a little more for hard to find bottles. Jealous, lol, Anthony. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, Phil and Deepa. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Renny, both of you are awesome. Ah, oh, thanks. Stephen Davidson. What is the number one ranked bottle on the shelf? Looks like single malts of Scotland. It is. It is the Ben Nevis 23-year-old sherry cask. Uh, Oh, of course, there's nothing in here. $269, 52.7% Ben Nevis 23. It came out maybe a year ago, two. Right, you're all waiting to know. What the hell is this one? It is not from Campbelltown, a Glen Elgin. Again, another oldie and another ex-bourbon. 54.7%, 21 years. So a lot of similar bottles in, in the sense that Cadenheads, yes, all ex-bourbon, old ex-bourbon. Oh, hang on, I don't have a label for it. Let me go to the spreadsheet. This is 21 year Glen Elgin. Notice it has the Glen Livet in the name. Glen Elgin, Glen Livet, that historical naming where um, Glen Livet was really the style of whiskey that came from Speyside before Glen Livet said, no, that's our name, stop using it. But for some kind of grandfathered in naming, because Cadenhead often has, uh, you know, a Glen, Glen Rothis, Glen Livet, or Glen Elgin, Glen Livet in their naming. Right. Uh, Glen. Elgin, where are you? I wonder if that one's Sean's. Hang on, how many has Sean got? That might be Sean's. That's, that's probably why. Because it's not on my spreadsheet. <laughs> Luckily we haven't opened it, Sean. Glen Elgin, the Glen Elgin has got to be Sean's. Pretend I didn't take that out, Sean. There we go. Perfect. I am the daddy of the finish from a 30 years from... It's supposed to be a whiskey, but the finish. 13 years isn't a young whiskey. No. The Lefroy 8 is at the tail end of young. 13 is middle-aged. Okay, we have one more. This is it. It's an official bottle. We need, many, uh, this? we need to push everything over a little bit. Make it a little, get a little more space. I'm, I've been a big fan of Ardmore since Ardmore Legacy, <laughs> the bottle which started us on our journey. And um, I think we still, don't we have an Ardmore on here at the moment? Uh, hang on, where's the last Ardmore that we had? We had a fantastic Ardmore independent bottle, old malt cask, but I just wanted to try the official. Wow, that's, uh, that's very dark, isn't it? <laughs> so 30 years and the ABV is 47.2. Can we see any more of the label? Not really. So an official bottle of Ardmore. Uh, this cost, you wanna guess? Take a guess while I have a look. Double matured over three decades in ex-bourbon and first fill ex-bourbon. Oh, so it, okay. So it's fully ex-bourbon, quite a dark color. So it's ex-bourbon and then first fill ex-bourbon. 
Uh, so, any other? Oh, interesting, there's Japanese on this label. I wonder where this came from then. Or at least there's, you know. Very Japanese. Well, there's characters on here that look like it was uh, Japanese or Chinese. Well, there's Chinese characters. No, it says Suntory. Okay. So it's got a Suntory name on this label. Interesting. Beam Suntory UK. Oh, no, that's why. But I wonder, I wonder if it was bought in China or Japan. Anyway, there we go. Did, did anyone guess? Let's see, 330, 430, 450, 600, 300, uh, 435, 250 a while back. So 300 US, Tom Tubbs. Stefan, 340 euros. Okay. Shipped to here, 395 US dollars. So that's about in line with most of those guesses, isn't it? Not too bad. Not too bad. Maybe we were, maybe we did better on the Ardmore than the Highland Park. What then do we get to up it out of them? Well, this is your chance. Let's get this box out of the way. This is your chance. Now, you've tried that one. You've tried that one. You've tried that one. 25-year Isla, a Glen Turret, a Highland Park, a 22-year Le Jague, a 30-year Ardmore. And you've tried this one as well. Mm. So, which, which one do you want to try? Basically, one of these five. I think I'll be back with you before you need you. Don't you have to back to forget this. So this, the Highland Park is kind of my, my choice. I eat duck when you do, I put a fly that I eat it on. Which one should Deeper try? Oh yeah, I know you do that. You can open them all if you want to. Jimmy Leg, great price for a 30 year. Well, certainly cheaper than the 30 year Highland Park. That Highland Park, I'd love to try, Justin. If that all of them. You know what? That Highland Park, I would love to try as well. I've already done my run this morning. I am going to try it. Let's declare that Highland Park open. Hopefully there are no cork issues. Oh, it looks good. Should we get a glug? Of course, we're going to rush it, aren't we? Neck poor and 30 years old. Shut up. It's a, it's, we know it's low ABV. Uh, we should at least give it a tiny bit of time, shouldn't we? A little drop of water at least. Have you got the dropper? What are you going to try? I'm over 30. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I have 25. Right, okay. You open the Isla. I'll open the Ardmore. Wait, where's my cutter? Ah, uh, the Ardmore's... Oh. I'm just going to tear off the little tabs because I'm going to end up tearing off everything. Here we go. <laughs> Get... Get those bottles open. Right. We better keep this lined up. Hang on. This is the Highland Park. This is the Ardmore. Why are you putting it there? Right. <laughs> now, Ardmore should have some peat. The Isla should have some peat. Highland Park should have some peat. But this should be the lightest. Then next, and then next, presumably. 
Let's let's um let's put a little just one drop in each one. And we'll chat for a little bit. How are we doing for time? We're all good on time. We'll, we'll chat for a little bit and then we'll have a taste. Okay, what's everyone oh wrong wrong button? What's everyone thinking? Okay. The best part, which one to open first? All of them, Anthony, apparently. <laughs> I'm glad you're trying it, Preston. Add a boy, Phil. <laughs> Jimmy Lake. Get them. What haven't we opened? Uh, good glug. Okay. Alpha Crown. That Ardmore was on my watch list because I wanted to pick a birthier vintage. Ah, well, you're obviously younger than us. Congratulations. <laughs> Teddy KGB. This is why this channel is my favorite. Blind tasting and no flippers, then buy to drink. No fear whatsoever to open. <laughs> yeah. We're not against flipping the occasional if uh, if we don't like it. If you had your run before you, uh, you could metabolize the alcohol faster with the acceleration. <laughs> oh, great. Okay. Agreed. The blind tastings are very important. Yes. Martin, that I give you black bit. Whiskey. Eh? Oh, we could do a mini blind. One of our local shops has an Aaron 14. Buy it. Uh, Ex-Bourbon. Oh, hang on. It's a single cask. Wondering how close that would be to the Aaron 14. We had an Aaron single cask Ex-Bourbon and it was very dark. It was quite woody and it was nowhere near as nicely balanced as the standard 14. So um, expect it to be quite different, I would say. Happy birthday, <laughs> DJ11. One, one. Nice to see you in. I would open them eventually. Right. I'll give you blind this. You want to give me blind? Okay, let's um let's move a couple of bottles out of the way so people can see. And moved it. Okay. Just push them that way a bit. Right. Deepa's going to give me a mini blind of the three. How are we going to do it? I'm just going to quickly go through all three and say which nose I like the best. Okay. La 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 la. I'm trying not to hear where Deepa might be picking it up from. So I'll just make some noise while she's giving me two. Okay. Oh, quite fruity actually. Not much smoke. Oh, pineapple. I love pineapple on Old X Bourbon. That's fantastic as well. Oh, they're both actually, there's a little bit of mintiness. Hang on, which one is better? I'm inclined to go better on this one. Okay, can you give me the last one? La 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 la. Okay, I'm going to compare it to the first one. Oh, smoky. Okay, so this is the most smoky. Ah, uh, kind of um, shortbread biscuits, wheaty, wheaty cereal. Fruity, wheaty cereal and smoke. So I'm going to have that one last because of the smokiness. Oh, that's good as well. I'm going to guess off the nose Ardmore Highland Park and the Isla. Okay, let me try. Let me try. No, let me try this one first. Quite, quite punchy. I'm not used to the alcohol at all. Quite gentle, actually. Let me have another sip. It's more old ex bourbon than anything that would be smoky. It reminds me of the Dalyun, to be honest. Okay, next. Oh yeah, that's good. Old 
also some tropical going on. And wow, that really is like nectarines, Weetabix, and smoke. That is lovely as well. Um, I'm not going to say really, I mean, straight off a neck pour like that, that's hard to say what, what is going to be good. Okay, I'm going to go one, two, three. I think that's probably the Highland Park, the well, Ardmore. I, well, I hate that the very much. I just like the pineapple. I have to stick it up. I hate that the stick it up. Um, it has a little bit more richness coming from a bit more smoke. And the uh, last one. It's more smoky and um, less pineapple. <laughs> They're all very good. What is this? Oh, so I preferred the Ardmore. This one, so the one I thought was Ardmore is Highland Park. So actually more smoke in that. And then this is the Isla. That's the more smoky. Yeah. Okay, why don't you have a taste while I go to the chat? Okay, what's the ABV on that Williamson? I find newer ones which are bottled at 47.5. I think yours is higher. I can't find it on Whiskey Base. Williamson. What the hell's Williamson Okwami? Williamson? Williamson? I'm trying to think what has autocorrect done. Um, this one isn't dark. They also have a 14 sherry one. Ah, okay, whiskey. Whiskey, eh? It's going to be a try it and see. DU57YX91630N5. <laughs> the 30 year Ardmore near me is 429. At fifty three point seven. Oh, and this is this is how much? Forty seven point two. I think I'll go with the signatory Ardmore eleven for sixty. <laughs> K guide. Wow, Melissa, I can't keep the glasses straight. Yeah, I'm sure. False graph. Yes, Phil. It's certainly in need of post marathon weaning to alcohol again. Yeah, I was surprised how strong that was. Jimmy Jimmy Lake. Old N W and S. Who hasn't had that before? N W N S. Old. I, I don't, can't work that out either. James. Hey James. How you doing? Uh, feel bad that that there wasn't enough Springbank bottles available for you. Hopefully, uh, I would send you some if it was easy. I need some whiskey retail therapy soon. Yes, it's the Lafroig Eight Whiskey Mystery. Oh, that Williamson. Yes, what were you asking? Let me go back. Um, what's the ABV? This one is 63.4. Yes, not insignificant at all. I see, it does say Williamson right there. Right. Uh, Carnmore, Lafroy Gate. Oh, okay. Everyone's everyone's chipping in. Nectarine, Weetabix, and Smoke. Of course. Which one was it? Which, which one? The nectarine. I don't know. Which one was it, Jimmy? Was it the Ardmore? No, I think it was. Um, I think it was the Highland Park because I thought it was more smoky than the Ardmore. Did you have any opinion? I, I tried this one. This one is more subtle. This is more gas. Oh, pineapple. It's very thought... sunny, very dry, very island park. Oh yeah, more pineapple. And this one is just a thicker, creamier, the onion-yummy, but the but the is very sophisticated. Mm. Wow, okay, that... Smell, it's very obvious. That is delicious. Mmm. <laughs> Hang on, let me go to the other one. Oh, I think 
dirty, but I, but not bad. Again, not bad. This one, this one's better now. I prefer, I prefer this. But it's, it's mucky. I'm not drinking, nice. remember. It, it's short, even. It's pretty uh, mm. thin, but... That is delicious as well. This is like this old, old ex-bourbon, pineapple, tropical, with the smoke on the top. Quite ashy smoke. It's not ashy. I just said quite no, ashy. No, no, no. I'm not an ash, but not that grey. The finish. The finish is ashy. Any ideas which which Isla distillery it could be? Not Ardbeg. I'm sure it wouldn't be an Ardbeg at that price. I'm not sure about this. I'm not after the sensation, the feeling, but the after this is one thing. It's delicious. It's, it's <laughs> okay, Jimmy Leg. Oh no, we got that one. Mr. Tiger Mode, so the HP30 was your top choice. I think I actually put it second, but when I went back to it, I put it first. Uh, label creep. Thanks, Phil. Definitely a different beast, yes, than 47.5. Uh, right. You're making me wonder why I don't keep whiskey at work, Phil. You at work, Jimmy? <laughs> nebulous, nebulous. Uh, Lefroig is more coastal flavored. Often Laphroaig is a bit medicinal iodine because they cut their peat close to the ocean. And so that that smoke does come through. Ardbeg tends to be more ashy. And I'm not that familiar with Kalila to really describe it, but Kalila is another one, um, which is, it's most likely that this is Kalila, most likely, just, just based on the logistics of um, getting barrels. DJ11 just received a $200 gift card for Total Wine. Fantastic. Should I, A, put it towards a $300 bottle? I've been eyeing. Come on, you've got to tell us what it is. Buy a $200 bottle or buy an assortment of cheaper bottles. If you've never had Craig Ellicky 23, any chance you've been eyeing that bottle? Come on, tell us what bottle you've been eyeing. <laughs> I would be tempted to use the money to go towards something that you wouldn't otherwise buy, maybe. But, you know, you can get better value out of your money if you go the other way. David Owen, I take it, Phil, that they are all going to be delicious. Yes. I mean, how bad can they be? Uh, Mike. Oh, Mike. Hey, Mike. Mike Lee. Happy Thanksgiving. And to you, Mike. I've not oh. seen you for a long time. Melissa, goodbye, Melissa. Melissa's off? Okay. We should go quite soon as well. Uh, let's see. Uh, Stefan, it has to be Kalila. Bonner 20 year plus, uh, yes, no Pete. Lagavulin would be too expensive. Ardbeg also, yeah. I agree. Unless there was some, you know, it could possibly be, you know, like Porter Skeg, where they will take. Colila, but then they might age it in ex Lefroig barrels. You never know. There could be some influence. Um, Justin Miller, what are the bottles? What do you mean, what are the bottles? Do you want to see all of them again? I think it's just the best. That, that Highland Park is it's good, isn't it? It's very classic. That's a. And it finished. Oh, I can finish. good mm. that's all pineapple tropical mm. with this little I just have the better char it's so good at the finish a little bit it's, oh a li very subtle a little bit caramelized like flame roasted pineapple bits there and elegant okay let's do um let's do a little bottle parade then here we go le jake 22. Glen Turret, 29. I have to check that they're ours and not Sean's. The Ardmore, 30 year old. The Highland Park, 30 year old. The Isla, 25 year old. 
A young one. Lefroig, eight year old. A pair of 22 year Dal Ewans, both the same bottle. And the Jag, 13 year Amontillado, almost 60%. Now they all look like they're all on deeper. <laughs> Here, let me try the last little taste of the Ardmore. Mmm, that nose is pineapple. Mmm, quite bitter on the finish compared to the Highland Park. It's quite licorice and you tend not to like licorice. But we'll... Yeah, it's more smoky. More fantastic. Okay, last one. Back to the Isla. Let's give it a go. Mmm, that's lovely as well. Tastes a bit younger, to be honest. It's just too thin for me. It's forty-six percent, but I think it's a simpler whiskey. I am. I go for this. <laughs> so you're skipping the two hundred dollar, and the three fifty four hundred, and you're going straight for the five hundred. <laughs> Good choice. Right. Let's see. Kolila, or just possibly Bowmore. Yeah, that would be very unlikely to be a Bowmore as well, wouldn't it? Jimmy Leg, solid advice. Oh, that was on the Craig Ellicky. <laughs> Mr. Tiger Mode. Phil, love your descriptions and the store tours. Hopefully we'll get some more once we get to the UK. Uh, well, you got the full range of bottles anyway. <laughs> yeah, DJ, yes. DJ, what bottles are you looking at? Come on, don't keep us in the shade, shade here. DJ saying he's been eyeing a $300 bottle, but he didn't tell us what it was. There's so much Kalila made. Gotta be Jimmy, hasn't it? Yeah. Sandy McDonald. Just had a 28 year Springbank. Oh, 20 CL. <laughs> Cost me 118. Wow. That's for... fantastic. Oh, no, hang on. For 20 CL. Okay, so you're talking about uh, a $500 bottle. Yeah. That's pretty good. Preston. Well, hopefully it was good. Was it an ex bourbon 28 year old? Was it an official Springbank or was it an independent bottle? In their ballot. So I guess it came from Springbank. Uh, let's see. Preston, I bet you guys could make some crazy home blends. No, no, but I, uh, I, I, uh, I prefer I prefer your I uh, combination than I uh, 25. Which combination did I make? Uh, okay. Infinite. Deepa doesn't like it when I blend things. <laughs> she doesn't like it in theory, but then she likes it when she drinks it. False graph. Well, I guess Phil intends to drink some alcohol today. Anyway, for dinner. Yes. So why not have it? Yes. I've got a few days before the next run. Stefan, great nostalgia bottles uh, you got there. The Glen Turret should be great. I have a 27 year old, which is fantastic. Oh, nice. And whiskey from the 80s is also fantastic. Huge difference from me to the 90s. Which one's from the 80s? I've forgotten. Oh, the Highland Park is 89. The Ardmore is 87. The Glen Why isn't this open? <laughs> why is it deeper? Why why isn't this one open? It's okay. You've had the Lefroig already. Let's let's try it. <laughs> oh, hang on. Can we get a squeak? No. We got a pop though. We are pouring the 29-year-old Glen Turret from 1987. An ABV. Uh, the ABV is 42.1. So this is going to be gentle. Um, there's no need to drop water into this, I don't think. So, obviously, obviously this won't hold up to the ones that we've just drank because they're stronger. But it's is uh, 30 years, how many years? Uh, 20, 29. 29. So you have to imagine you haven't had that strong alcohol. Oh, that's sort of, um, that's slightly coconut and green leaves. 
Unusual. And almost fermented coconut. Fermented coconut. Yeah, that's a better description. Slightly almond. Um, why don't you have a taste? It's fine. Uh, musty. They are dusty. Well, remember, these have all been in Springbank Cadenhead Warehouse. Oh, bah, bah. That's where they've lived. Bit. It's a beautiful occasion. The way are is fantastic. <laughs> it's just walking. <gasps> yeah. I can't feel to go there. So they, it's going to be freezing cold. So they all have a touch of Campbelltown about them. Glen Turret. Oh, I put that the best. Wow, that is. Wow. That doesn't disappoint at 42%, does it? Wow. Oh, yeah. I put that in more like uh, 48. More like 48. Okay. It that is very oh. impressive. It's, it is like. Fermented coconut again, a bit of the tropical. And then the second half, it goes vanilla into caramel. The finish is, is actually more like caramel and marshmallows. Mm. It's almost sherry, but it's not sherry. Wow, that is delicious. 218. It's very good. <laughs> I bet it uh, it's a space act. Um, Glen Turret is... I don't know. Oh, quite. The f the finish is quite candy sweet, isn't it? But <clears throat> I feel that, oh, it just has a bad story. It's not a bad for me. Oh, okay. You're still liking the Highland Park. It's not a too. Where's Glen Turret? Okay. DJ11, the Glen Morangi Signet. Ah, uh, yes. <clears throat> well, here's my opinion. As a person who doesn't drink coffee and doesn't like coffee, I did not like the little taste of Glenmorangie Signet at all. But if you're a coffee person, maybe that would be different. Uh, I personally wouldn't buy the Signet at all. Do you remember we actually tried this Glenmorangie Signet on the way to Australia, I think, at the airport, and it's a very coffee roasted bean oh, yes, flavor. Yes. At least, but and I remember it was bad. Yeah, not for me. I would absolutely say buy the Craig Ellicky Twenty Three instead. No, 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 don't buy this one. But we are non coffee people. Uh, let's see. P.S. Not a peat guy. Love Glen, Glen Morangy. Fair enough. Now, Craig Ellicky isn't peated, but it is... Um, it has flavours that might make you think it's peated. It's quite unusual and a bit funky. It's a very dirty side. It's like a side from Campbelltown. So maybe you wouldn't like that at all. Uh, Jerry Miller. Tax is too high in Washington for DJ. Yeah. Yes. It's always crazy that a bottle contains liquid that was put in the cask before I was even born. Jeff, I don't think we have experienced that. <laughs> but I know what you mean. Jerry Miller, have to head out for Thanksgiving dinner, and so do we. Till next time, everyone. Thanks, Jerry. Jerry, we still... Was it Jerry's? We have your Talisker 25 waiting. Waiting to be tried. I was going to say, because I'm not drinking, we haven't tried it. And now, of course, look what I've done. Okay. Uh, I love all, love coffee all day. Well then, DJ, it must be for you. Have you actually tried the Signet? I would try and get a sample from someone. Come on, someone in the chat here. Get DJ a sample of the Signet. Justin, do you have it? Trade uh, DJ a sample. JD. Can't wait to pop my new Glen Scotia 11, Netherlands heavily charred American oak. Wow, 56.5. That sounds like it's going to be beefy. Coffee and chocolate. Yeah, Kwame, for that signet. I'm roasting coffee beans right now, Nick. <laughs> David Owen, you're an Englishman, Phil. You must like tea. I do not. I don't drink anything caffeinated. And it's not because I'm against caffeine. It's because I'm against getting my tongue burnt and it's always too hot. For some reason, 
I can't drink hot things. And, and me, I do up in India. I have never took a tea in India. And you don't drink tea in India? Shy, shy. But your mum and dad drink tea. Yeah. How come you never got into the habit? The only time I have caffeine is at mile 18 on mile 23 of the marathon when I'm taking gels with caffeine oh, to try and yummy. get me to the finish. Jeff Whiskey, I too cannot stand the taste of coffee, but love the signet. Well, there you go. Contrasting opinion. Found the chocolate leading the way with only enough coffee bitterness. Fine. Yes, I could see that because I do like dark chocolate, which has obviously got caffeine in. Do they vary batch to batch? Hmm, not sure. See, I can spot great whiskey, Stefan. You can. You've nailed yes, them all. Yes, yes. You've nailed them. Uh, happy Thanksgiving, Mr. Tiger Mode. Cheers all. Justin, don't have any signets yet. Ah, fair enough. Don't have any signet in the no. name. No, it's that particular Glen Morangy. DJ, tasted it once in Vegas, but was trying a lot that night. Okay, so you know what you're getting. I say go for it. It sounds for like it. sounds like you've been waiting for an excuse to get this bottle, and now is your chance. Enjoy yes. it. Yes. Hope you found some turkey over there. Oh, JD bourbon approach. Okay. We are going to get together with the expat. Yeah, we're getting together with our friends from the first company I worked at, um, Industrial Light and Magic, which at that time was the George Lucas, you know, Star Wars visual effects company. Twenty years ago. Now it's owned by Disney. So, 20 years ago, yeah, 2001, it is, mm. it's 20 years, all the expats, um, anyone who wasn't American, didn't really have anywhere to go on Thanksgiving. <laughs> and so we, we all got together because we got free turkey from ILM at that time. So we all had too many turkeys. Then you do bant. And so we all got together. But over the years, people have moved on from ILM. And I don't think there's anybody but the first time the this year. year who still works at ILM. I don't think so. And so we didn't have a free ILM turkey, so we had to get one. Apparently, somebody had another friend who was still at ILM who didn't need their turkey. So we will still be eating what I like to think of as a gift from George Lucas, even though it's not connected to George anymore. <laughs> the ILM turkey. But it will be great to see everyone. Yeah. And everyone... Uh... Only by American. That's right. There's only one American out of, I think, 27 people coming. No, two. Christian as well. She's American. Oh, oh yes. Uh, but there's, but there's very few. I don't think I'll be taking the Highland Park 30 with me, but we will take my sample box of whiskeys. Okay, false graph. Thanks, guys. It was nice to get uh, to see you once again. See you next week, I guess. And whoever will be there. See you at the V Pub. Everyone have a great day, wherever you are. Um, we will try and catch you before we run off to the UK. We fly out on December 8th. The marathon is December 5th. We'll try and do something in between. Give you a marathon results. I did it. Happy Thanksgiving. Signed. Uh, happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. All right. We are out of here. We done? Let's have some fireworks. I think today was well worth some fireworks. <laughs> <laughs> No turkey in Lithuania. <laughs> That's where you are, JD. Gotta go. We have to go as well. Mm, maybe a little taste of the Highland Park, though. Bye. Oh, and turret was good as well.